contains inconvenient truth and controversial topics that may be offensive to some audiences. Listener discretion is advised. Radio from the heart of America now. And now, the Commander-in-Chief is back. Freedom Friday with Carl Gallup's The Oval Office of Gulf Coast Talk Radio. All right, welcome back. Welcome back, Gulf Coast. Welcome back, America. Welcome back, world. Yeah, we are broadcasting live today, as we do almost every single Friday. And Mallory Bardwell, my world-famous producer, is in the studio, as she is almost every single Friday. So it's good to have you with us. We've got a great show lined up for you today. And uh, coming fresh and straight out of Israel, Tel Aviv, Israel, is my dear friend and ministry partner. In fact, he's coming over to the States in just a few weeks, and we'll do a prophecy conference together, the Hear the Watchman Conference in Dallas, Texas. We'll tell you more about that in a moment. As well as, uh, after that, we'll jump on an airplane together, and we're going to be all over the United States doing media, uh, a media tour, and uh, we'll be on television and radio Um, from coast to coast for almost a week because of a brand new book that has just come out that Zev Parad and I have written together. And uh, the publishers have employed the services of a film crew sending me to Israel in just a few months. And Zev and I will meet up over there and we'll produce a documentary movie about this book and the story of this book. So uh, that's who my first guest is. Zev, I guess you're calling from Tel Aviv right now. And I, I'm imagining it's probably close to midnight there, about eight time zones away from the central time zone from which I am broadcasting. How are you doing, my friend? Doing great, Carl. It's an uh, honor and a blessing to be here. Yeah, it's after midnight here in Israel, but exciting times. Yes, they are. And listen, I want to go ahead and tell our audience, I know that you and I know this, and we won't care, and we'll work with each other on it, but there is about a three-second or two-second delay on the phone line between Israel and here. So when you, it sounds like there's a little gap between our conversations, that's why. That just can't be helped. So it's not as smooth as it would be if it was, uh, you know, in the States or in North America. But anyway, listen, let's just get right to it, Zev. First of all, uh, just tell people very quickly about yourself for those, all of our new listeners, and, um, and then where people can find your ministry. And then from there, let's jump into the topic of this brand new book that you and I have written, because I know... Um, every time we do this story, people just go crazy about it all over the world, and we need to let people know the book released today. It ships today. But anyway, tell people about you and how they can find you. Okay, well, that just happens from time to time. Uh, it's a, For whatever reason, the string breaks between the two cans, the one... <laughs> The one that's over in Israel and the one that's right here on the Gulf Coast. Every now and then that happens. So I hope that we don't have to fight our way through this today. But if we do, we'll have Zev back on later because we have had him on before. We've had crystal clear connections. But let me just go ahead and answer the question for him. Messianic Rabbi Zev Parat, born and raised in Israel, uh, his he comes from a family, a, lo- a long family of very important rabbis. His father, his grandfather, his great grandfather. They uh, several of them served in the Dayan, which is the rabbinical courts of Israel. Uh, on his mother's side, there are um, uh, he has relatives who are very, very high officials in the current Israeli government. I'm not going to give their names just because of uh, you know the the possible complications, maybe even danger with all of that. But the bottom line is, so he's deeply connected in that way. Uh, to the Israeli government. He's deeply connected to the rabbinical systems there. He was raised in Orthodox Judaism, speaks Hebrew as his first language, speaks beautiful English, as you know. He was a part of that is because he lived in the United States sometime with his father, who was back and forth from Israel to the United States. And Zeb would be put in English-speaking schools while his father was managing uh, a big uh, Hebrew synagogue and Hebrew schools, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the life he comes out of, but he is a born-again believer believer in Jesus Christ and is intimately connected to this story of the rabbi, the secret note, and the true identity of Messiah. All right, Zev, let's try it again. Are you there? 
I'm back here over here. It looks like the enemy doesn't like this book, but uh, it's going to take much more than that to stop this message. Yes, it will. And listen, I've already told them before you came on, I don't know if you heard it, that uh, you're coming to the States here in just a few weeks, and you and I will be together again at the Hear the Watchman Conference in Dallas, Texas. By the way, folks, if you want to be a part of that, Zev and I are two of the main speakers. In fact, we're the first two speakers, and there's a whole bevy of speakers, uh, world-renowned speakers. And you can go to the website, Hear the Watchmen, M-E-N, hearthewatchmen.com. And you can sign up. There may still be a few tickets left. It's at a conference center in Dallas, a hotel conference center. It'll seat, I don't know, six, seven, eight, nine hundred people, and it always fills up. So um, you can still get a ticket. If you'll use my name, Gallops20 is the code, or Porat, P O R A T 20. Use our last names with a 20 behind it. You'll get a discount on your tickets, or you can get the live stream. And Zev will be there with me. And then after that, Zev, you and I are touring the United States on Christian television and radio, and we're talking about this amazing true story, the story of Rabbi Yitzhak Kaduri. It just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. The intrigue, the attacks, the fake news, the the deep state, um, the witnesses that have come forward, the new evidence, the ties to prophecy. Zev, that's all I'm going to say. I'm going to hush and let you have the rest of the time. Tell people about all of this and your connection to it and what you think God's doing with it. Well, the Rabbi of the Secret Message on the Identity of the Messiah is definitely a book that the deep state in Israel, the Sanhedrin, the rabbinical movement, do not want to get out. I've been receiving uh, threats, Carl, for the past few months about this book, uh, telling me not to bring this book to Israel, not to spread the lies. But, you know, that's exactly what the enemy is afraid of. And we're not – and, again, the book here is is something that uh, we want to share and love here in Israel, but it's scaring the Orthodox movement. It's a secret that the deep state in Israel doesn't want to get out. It's been – the story has been out for years, but as you're saying, the cover-ups, the, uh, the, uh, the things that we're going to expose in this book, uh, and all glory goes to Jesus, to Yeshua, is exactly what they're afraid of. Yeah. It, it it is, and and let me just say, uh, Zev, you know, they can threaten, they can shake their fist, they can scream, they can holler, they can do anything they want. But in this book, it it, it is absolutely profusely documented uh, with with highly reliable sources and resources, language experts, people that speak Hebrew as a first language, yourself included, Messianic Rabbi Eric Walker out of Birmingham, Alabama. I mean, he's steeped in this story. He's There's a couple of chapters in here where he tells his story and his connection to it. Uh, he speaks Hebrew. His whole family's tied. His grandfather was tied to uh, uh, the very first uh, uh, elected government of Israel. So, I mean, you know, so all it's, 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 the thing is researched like a journalist or a uh, investigative, uh, you know, cop. But at the same time, it reads like a mystery novel. And everybody that's read it, that's already read it, you know, the the the, the pre-readers, that's what they say. They say, man, this thing is like eating a bag of potato chips. I pray that so because the message is powerful. Tell people kind of about the message and your involvement in it. Zev? Here we go. I think we've lost him again. We'll we'll get him back on the line again. We're going to take a I thought a bu- I had a stronger string on that one. I yeah. guess I didn't. Yeah. No, that's okay, Mallory. I appreciate it. Listen, Zev, I know he'll find out, he'll realize, and then he'll call back, so it's not a big deal. So, again, I will just tell you about it very quickly, and when we get Zev on, and then we'll have a two-minute break, and then I will... In fact, we can even go over into the next segment with Zev. Mike Shoesmith has graciously offered to do that if we need to, and today it looks like we might need to if we can keep a good, strong signal with Zeph. Remember, he's calling out of Tel Aviv. Uh, but here, at, at the phone's ringing now, so we might be able to get him right back on in just a few seconds. But let me just tell you how you can get it, how you can look at it. The quickest, easiest way is my name, carlgallops.com. You'll see a banner going right across the top. Click on the banner. It takes you to the book's website. From there, you can read inside. You can read several chapters, 30, 40 pages are reproduced in there so that you can get an idea of how it's written and where the story's going. The entire table of contents is there, so you can read that and you can kind of see where it's going, plus a lot of good background information on the website about me, about Zev, about this whole story, um, uh, endorsements, links, clicks. uh, There'll be more and more videos. A Facebook page has already been created. This is going to go all over the world.
the world. Uh, we did a story on this before some years ago, the beginning of it, and it was that book was published in five different languages. It was produced, another documentary was produced in three different languages. It went all over the world. So this one is like that book on steroids. This one eclipses it. This one makes the other book obsolete. So I know this book is going to go crazy. Zev, are you there now? I'm here, and okay. you know this this the whole connection uh, of this book is is quite amazing, Carl. Because again, it's we keep on saying it's a book, a, a book, and you know we we wrote it together. But all glory goes to Yeshua. This book is something that, and I'm going to say it again, and again that the Orthodox movement in Israel doesn't want uh, the world to hear or see. But it's too late because God's hand is already all over it. Yes. Growing up as a Jew in Israel and and also in America. Uh, the name Yitzhak Kaduri was always in my home. Uh, my father always quoted him. Um, my grandfather was well connected with him. And I know that he spent the night, uh, even Ariel Sharon spent a night in my, uh, in, uh, my grandmother's house in, in B'nai Barak, Israel. And always Kaduri was the main focus uh, of the family and everything. And then when this story broke out and Yitzhak Kaduri left the note that Jesus, Yeshua, is the Messiah, Little did we know that we're going to be standing here today, sitting here today in Israel, you in the States, in 2019, and the story just doesn't shut down, Carl, because it's God used the most venerated rabbi to reveal the name of Yeshua, Jesus. And the main thing here, Carl, is that Jews in Israel and around the world are being saved because of this revelation, because yeah. it's leading Jews to the written word of God. That's the main thing over here. Yeah. And I think that this book, The Rabbi, The Secret Message, and the Identity of uh, the Messiah, is, as you said, is much better than the first book because it mm-hmm. reveals the secrets of deep state, but it also has a lot of evangelistic tools in it, tools that can be used by believers and tools that can be read by non-believers, Jews and non-Jews, to understand exactly the impact of this and what it's doing here in Israel and around the world. And again, Carl, we're Friday night here at Shabbat, so the Sanhedrin are not online, that's for sure. But when this thing goes on podcast, they're going to be listening on Sunday. And uh, this is, you know, this is exactly what what this book is doing. Yeah, yeah, I, I know. And 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 the thing about it is that not only does the book tell the story. Uh, and the first book did, so I, there's a retelling of it, but it's in fresher words with fresher insight, but it just includes so much more that's happened, your involvement. When I wrote the first, first book, you and I didn't even know each other. Let's stop right there and take a time out. I'm looking, time's getting away from us, and then I'll pick up from right there because I think what comes next is very important. In the meantime, folks, go to carlgallops.com, carlgallops.com. You'll see the banner. Click on it. It'll take you right to the book's website, and from there you can order it. You can read parts of it. See if you like it or not. If you don't like it, don't order it. But if you do, and you probably will, you can click and order it. We'll be back in just a moment. Don't go anywhere. Freedom Friday with Carl Gallup, Zef Peratt, my guest. All right. Welcome back. Yeah. As I was saying, and Zef Peratt's still on the line from Tel Aviv, I was just saying that not only is the story retold, but now Zev and I, Zev and I not only know each other, but we've been in ministry for years. And again, all this new stuff, backstories, supernatural things are just going to blow you away. I mean, I, I, I just, we don't have time to talk about them. They're so absolutely astounding. New evidence, new witnesses, destruction of evidence, deep state, lying, threats, death threats. I mean, it's unbelievable. Plus, Zev, connections to prophecy that's unfolding before us. And I'm going to let Zev talk, but the other thing I want to say for you people that are preachers, teachers, Bible teachers, Bible study teachers, et cetera, there's a ton of good preaching, teaching stuff in here because we do deep word studies that bring the Word of God alive. And remember, Zev Peratt wrote a bunch of this, and he speaks Hebrew as his first language. He knows what he's talking about. So this this book is going to just blow this story out of the water. Zev, I'm going to hush and let you just say whatever you need to say about all of this and your connection to it. Well, I just want to uh, take an uh, opportunity to, to, to uh, speak in Hebrew two sentences to the people in Israel that are sending threats all the time and just tell them two words in Hebrew, and I'll translate what I said. What I just said was we're not here to cause any trouble. We're just here to glorify God and to 
shed the true light of the story, and we love you. Yeah, so I want to make it clear. They seem to uh, uh, think there's some kind of a war between us. There's no war. That's right. Each fact that we left to know that Jesus Yeshua is the Messiah. Yep. And we're just calling them to look at the scriptures and see the truth. Yep. And you mentioned the word study in the Hebrew. Yitzhak Kadori, he spoke Hebrew. That was his, uh, his first language. And he explained the gospel in the context that a Jew can understand, in the context that a rabbi can understand. And the fact that he quoted the alphabet and he used the original Hebrew alphabet, which is an ideographic language, mm -hmm. to quote the message of the Messiah using the first letter of the alphabet and the last letter of the alphabet. Well, we read in the book of Revelation, the Alpha and the Omega are in Hebrew, the Aleph and the Taf. And part of that story, Carl, was on Israel today and then was taken off the Internet, taken off the website because of the controversial subject. Right. That's in the book as well. Right. And I really recommend people to read it because it's shocking. Yes. No, you're right. And thank you for giving that one little tidbit. I mean, that's just one little, I mean, he just barely scratched the surface. There's about 12 other revelations like that in there. And I, I mean, without exaggerating, there may be more than 12, but he just gave you one uh, example of something amazing that, that was in major media, was scrubbed from the internet, but we preserved it. And we've got all of the backtracks and the links and the archives. And, and so we reproduce it in this book. And then I have Zev explain the Hebrew aspect of it, and it's just going to blow you away when you see it. So again, it's it, the book is called The Rabbi, The Secret Message, and the Identity of Messiah. It's published by Defender Publishing out of Crane, Missouri. Skywatch TV, Tom Horn and those guys are all behind this project. Again, they have employed the services of a film crew. They're sending me to Israel to meet up with Zev. We're going to do a documentary movie about the book. But the book has released today. It ships today, The Rabbi, The Secret Message, and The Identity of Messiah. You can get it anywhere good books are sold. And, of course, all over the Internet at all the Internet bookstores, including, of course, Amazon. Uh, so anyway, Zev, uh, you tell us some more about the book and your attachment to it and various aspects in it. Your whole testimony is in there, which is just astounding because not only your, your, your coming to Christ is, is powerful, but um, also because of your connection to the book and how all that happened. Plus, you know, people can read it online. I've even got a, a, a three quarters of the chapter that you wrote about the imam that gave his life to Jesus Christ because of the message of this book. We're just waiting for this book to be shipped to Israel and to see what God is going to do here in Israel, in the streets, in the malls, in the houses. We're going to be using this book everywhere we can in Israel. Because as you said, it's, uh, the, the first book, the first message, uh, would just reveal the, the note that Yitzhak Adori left, that Yeshua Jesus is the Messiah, led many, many people to the written word of God and to salvation. You may be thinking about an imam. What does an imam have to do with rabbi book. Well, just like every single Jew in Israel knows what an imam is, every single imam in Israel knows what a rabbi is. And a Jew knows that an imam is not going to believe in Jesus, and an imam knows that a rabbi is not going to believe in Jesus. But God had a different plan here, and he had Yitzhak Aduri, the most venerated rabbi in the history of Israel, believe that Yeshua, Jesus, is the Messiah. That drew an imam and other Muslims to be fascinated by this before they knew it they were in the written word of god the holy spirit fell on them boom salvation this is happening all the time in israel so we're excited about this book what it's going to be doing and again this book has a lot of testimonies inside a lot of revelations a lot of uh, secrets that are going to, be, going to be revealed but most of all it's scaring the devil and it's scaring the sanhedrin in israel and it's scaring a lot of people in the world but once again, the Bible is clear that everything that's hidden shall be revealed. And that's why this book is called The Rabbi, The Secret Message, and The Identity of the Messiah. It's a secret message of the Messiah, but it's also God's will and God's work to continue to reveal it because we're living in prophetic times. We're living in the times where veils are being lifted, where Jews are being saved, where Arabs are being saved. And we're excited about it. It's exciting times. If you're a believer listening to this anywhere in the world, you, can, you need to get this book, not because I wrote it or Carl wrote it, because the hand of God is upon it and because there's something in it 
that's scaring the deep state in Israel. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's a that's a good word. And you know, I I was just thinking, Zev, as as you were talking, uh, there's just there's just so much in this thing. I mean, as you said, all of these stories and the one about the imam. I mean, it's all right there. I mean, we. I, you, you've talked about this before, I know, in conferences, and I think maybe even on this radio program, but the whole story is retold there, and that's just a part of it. There there are some of the students of Kaduri uh, from his yeshiva, his, his rabbinical training school, that are now, there's 12 or 13, I think, that are now professing believers in Jesus Christ, and several of them were being taught by Kaduri secretly before Kaduri even died and before the note was put up. And so they have attested. They said, oh, yeah, he was a believer. That's what the note is about, because he was teaching us this. Yeah, and and there's more and more people that believe in Yeshua Jesus that are scared to come out. But I think that the more that the message gets out there, the more that books like this are written, the more that people go out and share their faith, it's going to encourage the other ones to come out. And I can tell you that the, the connection of Rabbi Kaduri with the people of Israel, secular Jews, atheist Jews, it doesn't matter. The culture is surrounded about it, with Israel Kaduri. I was in, in Jerusalem the other day, and there are notes of, uh, you know, Posters of Yitzhak Adori everywhere in Jerusalem right now. Yeah. People look up to him until today. Yeah. And he's he's still known, he's still recognized as the most, as what they say in Israel, the greatest rabbi that ever lived in the past 200 years. And they're still saying that. That's why they're trying to cover the story up. But I, I, I want to share a little bit about. Uh, well, I'm not going to go well, and reveal that everything's well, in the book. Uh, well, Zev, because, Zev, you know, we Zev, Zev let me break in. We got a little little pause between us. I'm sorry. All right, listen. I want you to. I want to hold you over. And Mike Shoesmith has already given me permission for another 10 or 15 minutes because I want you to finish what you were getting ready to say. But right now, I hear the music, and we're at the bottom of the first hour for a hard break. So, folks, we will be back in just a moment. Zev Parat from Tel Aviv, Israel. He'll be back on for another 10 or 15 minutes or so, and we'll continue to unpack some of these deep secrets and mysteries that we've now written in this book together. We'll tell you on the other side of the break. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Freedom Friday with Carl Gallops. 1330 WEBY. Carl speaks with ontological certitude and theological indubitableness. For you liberals out there, this means that Carl knows who he is and that he is unashamed to be on a first name basis with God. Now, here's Carl Gallops. All right, folks, welcome back. We're at the bottom of the first hour. Zev Peret from Tel Aviv, Israel, he's on the line. We've been talking about this brand new book, The Rabbi, The Secret Message, and the Identity of Messiah. Zev and I wrote it. We wrote it together. We've been working on it for many months. Defender Publisher has published it. It releases today. It ships today from Amazon. You can find it in bookstores wherever good books are sold all over the United States, I know, and and I'm not sure where from there, but if you are an international listener, I do know that uh, Barnes & Noble ships internationally, and so does Amazon. I know that. Um, Ingram uh, Distributors, I think you can get it directly from them. They ship internationally. But for those of you in you know, the United States, Canada, you'll have no problem get your hands on the book. Just you can get it from any place that good books are sold. But anyway, in the meantime, The Rabbi, The Secret Message, Identity of Messiah. If you want to read about 30, 35 pages, several chapters of it, plus look at the whole table of contents, go to my website, carlgallops.com. Click on the banner at the top. It'll take you to carlgallops.com forward slash rabbi. And you can just put that in if you want, carlgalves.com forward slash rabbi. Takes you to the book's website. Tons of cool stuff and information there you'll see when you get there. We'll be adding video material. There's already a Facebook site, but also you can click the Read Inside link and read, as I said, 30, 35 pages and several chapters. All right. Well, Zev, are you there, my friend? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, good. You were talking before... Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. There's a delay. You were t- you were talking, and I want you to pick it up. You were going to uh, talk about a testimony that, that somebody gave you last week. Go ahead. I was sharing about a testimony about uh, Rabbi Yitzhak Kaduri before the break. And I can tell you, Carl, that I was in the streets of, 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 of Jerusalem. It, we were not on an outreach. I was minding my own business. I was there uh, just uh, going to a meeting, and some Orthodox Jew approaches me, and he says, you're involved with, with Rabbi Yitzhak Kaduri, right? I said, well, I'm, uh, 
one of the people that wrote the, the book, yes. And then he says, well, you know that uh, my brother believes in Yeshua because of that book. This is an Orthodox Jew. Wow. And then another Orthodox Jew overheard the conversation, and he said, yeah, we know there's a new book coming out. How do they know that, Carl? Because they're constantly checking the Internet what's going on. And this is how the gospel is getting out. And he said, we're going to do everything we can to make sure that that new book doesn't make it to Israel. <laughs> and, you know, I just told them, you know, you, Yeshua bless you, and I and just walked away. Yeah. What I want to say here is they don't want that book to, to reach Israel. Yeah. We're going we're gonna to get the revelation out no matter what. If we have to print PDF files and go out in the street and use it, that's what we're going to do. Oh, yeah. But this is something, I mean, they don't want this book to hit Israel. I want people to understand that this book before it, it was published, is already shaking the streets of Israel. We're waiting to see what happens next week, Carl. We're excited about it. Yeah. It, 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 listen, there's all kind of ways. Just like you've had that massive CD campaign where you mailed out CDs and DVDs, we'll do the same thing. When the movie comes in, we'll mail it out all over Israel. We can put the book on CD in uh, electronic form. We'll mail it to every citizen of Israel. I mean, they're not going to stop this. They're not. And the thing is, folks, Zev and I, Zev, Zev lives there. He's born and raised there. His whole family's involved in Orthodox Hebrew movement. I mean, the Hebrew faith. This is not an attack on Jewish people. This is our love for Jewish people trying to show them that their greatest rabbi in the history of modern Israel, maybe in the history of Israel altogether, he believed in Messiah Yeshua, put it in a note and arranged for it to be left on his website after he died. Besides that, he left 12 to 13 of his own students whom he was secretly teaching this, and they're now born-again believers testifying that all of this is true. So the deep state in Israel can lie about it and hide it all they want, but this book is going to bust it wide open again along with the new movie coming out. Absolutely. It's going to bust it open, and also it's going to backfire on them because every time that they try to stop something, they're just proving that it's true. Because if it's not true, why are you trying to stop it? Right. And and let me just say, one of the things we did differently with this book, since the first book came out, and again, this one makes the first book obsolete. I mean, if you own it, it's a great book. But I mean, this book goes into all of that, plus so much more. Plus, one of the things that Zev and I did in the last four or five years since the first book was out, you know, we've gotten a lot of people saying, well, yeah, well, how come this and how come that? And we know this and we know that. And you're lying about this and you're lying about that. And this word doesn't mean this and this word doesn't mean that. So all of these objections to the story, uh, we've got them. Every one of them, we deal with them in this book. Very kindly. This book is very kind. It doesn't attack anybody, even people who have attacked us. Uh, personally, uh, we will tell their story, but we do not attack them back. We just factually tell the story and then give the right answers, and Zev and I uh, reference the correct answers. We will reference, of course, Zev speaks Hebrew, you know, first language, so when he says, no, here's what the Hebrew word means, he's a good reference, but we also use language experts, people with PhDs in the Hebrew language that teach in seminaries and yeshivas and universities all over the world. We've got them quoted in here. Uh, we've got major n news sources from around the world quoted, etc. So we've handled every objection, and that's one of the things that I love that you and I did with this book, Zev, is and that's why they're scared to death of it, because not only does it tell the story, but it deals with all of the arguments they've been making for the past four or five years. Have. Go ahead. It deals with all the objections. Several uh, known rabbis that have uh, come out with uh, with attacks or with uh, saying, you know, this is not true, that's not true. We deal with it. We do deal with it. We do answer all the objections. And as you said, the Hebrew, uh, we accurately answer every single objection over there. Even, you know, questions like, uh, you know, Kadori didn't say this or he couldn't say this. Well, it can't be that a rabbi that believed in Kabbalah said this. Well, can it be that a rabbi that was the head of the San, one of the heads of the Sanhedrin, Paul, would have a Damascus Road experience? Could that be? <laughs> I mean, this is a supernatural story that doesn't die. And we do answer all these controversial uh, uh, questions and debates that the rabbis have. And again, as you said, uh, you said, uh, uh, Carl, 
We're not here to attack anybody, even the ones right. that attack us. We that's love right. them. We just want to share the truth, and that's what the, the book does. And even those that do attack us and do persecute us, all we do is tell their story and then answer the objections according to the Word of God and according to the original Hebrew. Yep, yep, absolutely. And and we tell their story, and we even give their names so that you guys can check it out. And and listen, again, we don't attack them. We give their names only because they have come out in mainstream media and on radio and TV and all over YouTube. They've produced videos uh, trashing this story and sometimes me and Zev, but we don't we don't get into that. We just say, look, here's what they're saying. They object to this. They say this word doesn't mean that. And then we say, let's take a closer look at that. And then we go to the PhDs and to the Hebrew language schools, and we talk to Zev and what the word has always meant in, in Israel and what it means today and how people use the words today. And we just prove that their attacks and their objections are just false. It's like deep state. It's fake news. And, and we expose it and we give you their names, but we do not attack them. This book is not written that way. This book is written very professionally and godly. And again, it reads like a mystery novel. If you didn't know this story was true, you would think it was a fiction book, but it's not. It is more true than you would ever believe. Right, Zeb? Absolutely. And I want to just, you know, touch a little bit in the book. It's detailed, uh, documented much more in detail, but just touch a little bit on a a subject that many uh, uh, know about, and that's the name of Jesus in Hebrew, which is Yeshua. And the note was, you know, was decoded, and it says Yehoshua, and some people say that his name was not Yehoshua, but his name is Yeshua. Well, Yehoshua and Yeshua mean the same thing. In fact, if you look at the detailed Hebrew, Yehoshua actually means Savior, or He will save, and which matches perfectly with the note that Rabbi Yitzhak Kaduri left, because he he left the note in a decoded format, revealing the name of Yeshua. So he is the Savior. He is the Christ. So Yehoshua and Yeshua mean the same. And in the book, we get into the detail of, of the explaining the Hebrew on that aspect. So many times we hear people saying, can't be that he left the note that Jesus is the Messiah because he didn't write the name Yeshua. Yeah. He wrote the name Yehoshua. They both mean the same thing. That would be like me saying, Jesus is the Savior, or he's Lord and Savior. He will save or he yes. saved. It's the same yes. thing. And the because truth he's is. Alpha, the Omega, he's the first and the last, and therefore his, sa- his name is detailed in Hebrew the same, in the same way as the first and the last, as the Aleph and the Tav. It's the same thing. Yeah. No, you're right. And, yeah. and, and the truth is that if those, if Yehoshua, Yehoshua and Yeshua were not the same word, and by the way, again, we have PhD language experts quoted in here, several of them that say, oh, yes, they are the same word all the way back to antiquity. They've been used interchangeably, um, and they prove it. They talk about it, and they're not defending our book. They don't even know we exist. They're just, this comes out of their own research of the Hebrew language. But but the thing is, Zev, if these two words didn't mean the same thing, then my question to all of the detractors is, then why is there such a big deal about it? Why did you take the note down? Why did you destroy it? Why are you attacking Zev? Why are you attacking me? Why are you attacking the book? Why? Why? I mean, if it doesn't mean the same thing and everybody, quote, supposedly knows it, then what's the big deal? I mean, <laughs> but the deal is it is a big deal. They did take the note down. They did destroy it. They are threatening you saying, we're never going to let this come. You better not bring any books in here. You better not do that. They know that it will blow it wide open because the evidence is there and it comes from experts, not just people getting on YouTube trying to tell a deep state, different fake news story. Exactly. And and again, the rabbi, the secret message the identity of the Messiah, it's exactly why why they don't want the book to come out. Because, again, if it's not true, why are they afraid of it? There's a lot of Christian books out there, Carl, and a lot of good Christian books that make it into Israel, thousands of books. They never try to debunk those books. They just ignore them. So why, not, why are they not ignoring this book? Because they know that the secret message is what they don't want the people to know. They, they want to cover it up. They've been covering it up. Right. But God said... No cover-up. It's time to expose the truth. Why? Because Jews always want to know what the rabbis have to say. I've said this over and over again. So God said, I'll let them know what the biggest venerated rabbi in the history of Israel had to say. Jesus is the Messiah. And if you think that Paul was an impossible supernatural revelation, 
then here you have another one, Isakadori, a supernatural revelation. And I'm not comparing Paul with Rabbi Isakadori. That's not what I'm doing. What I am saying is Jews that always say that it's impossible for Paul to believe in Jesus, God said, okay, is it possible for Rabbi Isakadori to believe in Jesus? Is it possible for God to part the Red Sea? Is it possible for God to rain down manna from heaven? Is it possible for God to free the Jews out of bondage and bring them to Mount Sinai and receive the Word of God? Is everything possible? Is it possible for Moses to part the Red Sea? Nothing is possible. It's supernatural. And therefore, this message, the rabbi, the secret message, and the identity of the Messiah is supernatural. And we give all the glory to Jesus, Yeshua. We're just small people with a big God. But the message is getting out there. This book will hit the streets of Israel. This book will hit the world. And I can tell you, Carl, that it's much more than just exciting. No, you're you're right. This is this is huge. And folks, I want to listen. We're going to have to take a time out. And Mallory, you can go ahead and start the music because we're going to get into this. And and Zev, just hang on if you would. Mike Shoesmith just wrote me and asked for you to please take the rest of the time because there's more we need to unpack on this. Folks, please hear me. This is not a book sales. I, I, we're just trying to tell you this story is monumental. It is prophetic. It is shaking the world and has for years. And now it's getting ready to cause an earthquake. That's why we took the time to write the book, to tell the story, and to do all of the media that we're doing on it. The Rabbi, the Secret Message and Identity of Messiah ships today. We'll be back after this time out. Zephyrat will be back, and we've got some more exciting mysteries to unfold. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Freedom Friday with Carl Gallops. Sit down, buckle up, and hang on. All right, welcome back. So Zev Peratt's on the line from Tel Aviv. And so Zev, you, of course, know, along with me, we know him together and have become ministry partners and very good friends, Messianic Rabbi Eric Walker out of Birmingham, uh, Alabama, the executive director of Igniting a Nation Ministries and Television. And uh, his family is tied all, all the way back to before the beginning of Israel as well. He grew up in a completely Hebrew home. In fact, he has people in his family that speak nothing but Hebrew still to this day. Uh, so, um, And he, also being an Orthodox Jew well into his uh, middle age life, uh, came to Jesus Christ as uh, just like Kaduri, just like you, through revelations from the Word, through visions and understanding, and uh, just like you and Kaduri, the Apostle Paul, Messianic Rabbi Eric Walker. And by the way, many rabbis around the world have testified to all of this. I don't know why the attackers are focusing in on this so much. Well, I do know because it's just so indisputable. But anyway, Zev, look, here's what Eric Walker says. On the front of the book, we've got his his thing. He says, riveting, exciting, revolutionary, eye-opening, truth in every chapter, a must-read for Jew and Gentile alike, exclamation point. That's what he says. And um, I know you agree with that, Zev. You did an awesome job in your portion of writing this book, Zev. It's it's absolutely amazing. It's riveting. Even the editors that were going over it over and over and over, they one of them wrote me and said, you know, I, I, I've never edited a book where <laughs> on my fourth time through it, I'm still reading it like a story. They said, this is amazing. I think people are going to be really blown away when they read this, Zev. Absolutely. And again, the fact that God put us together, a Baptist preacher and a Messianic rabbi in Israel, that's a supernatural uh, yeah. story by itself. That's also documented in the book. Yes. But, you know, a lot of people may be thinking, uh, you know, so you mentioned earlier that Rabbi Kaduri uh, spoke about the original Hebrew alphabet. What's the implication of that? What's so huge about that? Well, if you understand anything about Hebrew mindset, when a, he, when a Jew that doesn't believe in Jesus, doesn't believe in Yeshua, hears us quoting things like the Alpha and the Omega, he's the first and the last, he's the Alpha and the top, for them that's a Christian concept. Yeah. But it's not a Christian concept. It's the most Hebrew concept written in the Bible because from Genesis, every single sentence in the Bible, in Hebrew, in a Hebrew Bible, the word Alpha Omega is there, which is Aleph, the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, and the last letter top. And when when Kaduri quoted the original alphabet, quoting Jesus' words, where he said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, I am the Aleph and the top, he was actually quoting that Jesus is the Word. You understand in John 1, 14, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, tabernacle among us. By him identifying the original Hebrew alphabet, 
as being one of the sources to reveal the name of the Messiah, he was actually confirming that Jesus is the Word, Jesus is God. Yes. And that's what makes it so huge, and that's why it's so important for people to understand the implication of that, because we know Psalms 122.6 says, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem, they shall prosper that love thee. What we need to understand is we need to know how to pray for Israel. Yeah. How do we pray for Israel? When you read this book, and you understand the implications of this book, you understand the research of this book, the exposure of this book, you'll have a better understanding of how to pray for Israel, and you'll be more effective in the kingdom work to bring in the gospel back to Jerusalem and go home. That's, that's why it's so important. Carl. Yeah, that's good. That's good. And let me just tell you, so Mike Shoesmith, who would normally be on during this time, I've been communicating with him off and on during the break, et cetera. And he wrote a few minutes ago, he says, look, I'm loving this interview with Zev. Give him the full 30 minutes of my time. He's on a roll. And I wrote him back and I said, thank you, brother. You're so gracious. And then look what he just wrote, Zev. He said, Mike Shoesmith just wrote, he said, I used the rabbi book material about Itzhak Kaduri to lead an Orthodox Jew to Christ in a Pennsylvania parking lot. And then he said, this is important stuff, exclamation point. So there you go. I didn't even know that. There's a testimony. I wish I'd put that in the book. <laughs> praise Yeshua. Praise Jesus. We love you, Mike. Keep up the great work. And thanks for giving up the time. But, uh, we look forward to uh, being together all in Dallas. Yeah, yeah. Sharing these testimonies. Well, Zev, listen, we've only got a few minutes, but I can say another connection to all of this story. The reason we're putting it back out is because of all of the new stuff, all of the, the new evidence, the new witnesses, uh, the attacks, the slander, the deep state, the fake news. We've uncovered it all. We've exposed it here in a very, very sweet, professional, but hard-hitting way. It reads like a mystery novel. It's A lot of it's like a, a biography. There's a lot of me talking about my whole journey, supernatural connections, how you and I got connected. There's a lot of you talking about your supernatural uh, journey, how it all connected to the Kaduri story, how that's all exploded in the last few years. But, but Zev, also, we tie it to the prophetic. We tie it to the fact of Jerusalem being restored to Israel, a 2,700-year-old prophecy. That's connected to the Kaduri story. Kaduri actually talked about that. The whole talk that's going on in Israel, the complete outpouring of the third temple, the third temple, the third temple. Kaduri predicted that that stuff would happen. And this was before he died. It was all connected to his revelation of Yeshua. All all of that's in the book. I mean, this this thing, this book covers about twelve different topics. Zev, well, I think we might have lost him right here at the last minute, but that's okay. Uh, Zev, listen, we'll get back together again later when we have a better connection. But uh, here's the bottom line: we're we're going to have to go to the top of the hour break in just a few seconds, anyway. Uh, but the bottom line is you can find out more about Messianic Rabbi Zev Peratt at his website, messiahofisraelministries.com, messiahofisraelministries.com. Again, you can go to my website, carlgalps.com, and you'll see a banner right there for Zev's website, um, and, and it's easy to find him, Zev Peratt, Messiah of Israel Ministries. All right, the book is called The Rabbi. The Secret Message and the Identity of Messiah. It releases today. Zeph Barad and I wrote it. Defender Publishing published it. It is going to go all over the world. I know that for a fact. And there's a movie coming out about it in just a few months. Get your copy now. It's shipping today. We'll be back at the top of the second hour. Freedom Friday with Carl Gallops. We're live this Friday afternoon. Mallory Bardwell, my world-famous producer, in the house. We'll see you in a second. For thousands of years, mankind has debated how creation began. Ancient texts tell us the story. But today, the real message behind the pivotal account of the Garden of Eden has been obfuscated and lost. That is, until now. World-renowned author Carl Gallops digs up the hidden truths from the book of Genesis to finally give back the knowledge that was lost to the world. Find out what really happened in the Garden of Eden, what Jesus taught about Eden on the cross, and how the conflict between Jesus and the gods of antiquity is about to erupt on planet Earth, fulfilling biblical prophecy. In the new book, Gods of Ground Zero, this explains everything.